Hi, this is Barry here, and you are very, very welcome to the Passion to Profits podcast. Now, in today's podcast episode, I want to talk about something serious. Uh, what I want to talk about is you and bossing you. Because while it's great having these big dreams, these goals, these things that you would like to achieve, if you have those up here, they never happen. And the reason they never happen is because you need to bring them into the physical world. And you need to use your hands and you need to use tools and you need to show up to do the work to transfer what's in here into the real world. Now, some people won't like the information I'm going to give in this podcast episode because a lot of people are deluded. A lot of people assume that if I visualize, if I imagine, if I, you know, lose myself in these fantasies of building a huge online business, of having huge social media followings, of making lots of money online, I'm going to get there. But you're never going to get there. And the reason you're never going to get there is because you need to transfer what's in here into the real world. And some people don't like that. Some people would rather sit on social media today and go through post after post after post where everybody says that they're amazing, that everybody says you can achieve and do whatever you want. And we read those posts, we watch those videos, we read all those motivational quotes and it makes us feel nice and warm and fluffy inside and make us feel great about ourselves. But that's not going to change your life. I could read motivational posts from now till the day I die and nothing's going to change. And that's what you need to realise is that if you want your life to change, you need to make changes. And one of those is going to be sitting your butt in the seat doing the work on days when you don't want to do it. And if you're not willing to do that, well then I think you should stop right now and give up on that big dream because it's never going to happen. Because you need to take physical work in the physical world to get physical results. Now the first thing I would say to you is that you need to set up some non-negotiable habits. Because you need to realise that your habits have got you where you are and if you want your life to change, it means doing new habits. You know, in my own case, I put on a couple of pounds. And the reason I know how this has come about is because I developed bad habits. I developed bad eating habits. I wasn't exercising as much as I used to. And so the pounds have crept on. Now, I know if I want to lose this weight, what I need to do is I need to change my habits. I need to eat better. I need to exercise more. And then I know the weight will disappear. So I know I need to change my habits to get to where I want to get to. And that's what you need to do. You need to realise that if you want your life to change, it's going to involve you making changes and making changes to your habits. And these habits that you will probably take on will be uncomfortable. There will be habits you don't want to do. There will be habits and things that are going to take you outside your comfort zone. And if you're not willing to do those habits, well then I'm sorry. It's not going to change. So you need to set up some non negotiable habits because as I said if things are going to change things are going to change now as well too not only are habits really really important but you need to set up boundaries you need to set yourself away from everyone else sometimes away from the internet but you need to find a space that you can work in where you've got no distractions online or offline and you can do the work you know, if you imagine me recording these videos right now where I'm sitting at the kitchen table, I know for a fact my family will be just passing in and out of this room and I know I'll be distracted. I know if I am connected to the internet, I'll probably be getting all these alerts, beeps and all these different things that are going to distract me. And you will find that if you don't lock yourself away, you will just go after those easy distractions. You know, right now it'd be easier for me just to switch off this camera, go away and make a cup of tea or watch you know, something on TV for five or ten minutes. Or maybe just watch the odd YouTube. Or go in and have a conversation with my wife or my kids or something like that. It'll be a lot easier for me to do that. And you need to realise that those distractions are your brain, are the conditioned part of you looking for an easy way out. Looking for a distraction. So what you need to do is you need to lock yourself away. You need to sit your butt in your seat and do what needs to be done. Now, if you find that maybe you can't find a quiet place in the house, maybe you have got kids, what you could do, and something that I used to do, was just go and sit in the car. Get in the car, lock the car, open up your laptop, switch on your phone, 
and either do your writing, record some videos, do a podcast episode or whatever. But by having this kind of, you know, locked space, it means you can do what you need to do. And if you find that maybe sitting in the driveway is a little uncomfortable because all the neighbours are walking past and wondering why are you sitting in the car, what you could do is maybe just drive down to the local supermarket and park in their car park or whatever and then just do some work there. But you need to separate yourself from all the distractions. And if you can't separate yourself from all the distractions, again, your life's not going to change. So you need to do something like that. You need to find some space. It could be even a cupboard. But just lock yourself away so there's no distractions can distract you from the most important work that you need to do. Because this should be, if what you're telling yourself that this is important to you, you need to back it up with important actions. Now, another thing I'd say to you is that you need to track your progress. You know, a lot of us will just take action and not realize, well, is this action moving the needle forward or am I just being a busy fool? So what I would recommend you should do is maybe get a pen and paper and then write down whatever you're doing each day and then maybe go back at the end of the week and see, is it putting the needle in the right direction? You know, if you're writing blog posts, you know, are many people reading your blog post? Do you see like a, a climb in the amount of readers on your blog? Do you find that maybe the videos that you're recording, is the viewership going up? If you're doing podcast episodes, are you getting more listeners? Maybe that lead magnet that you're giving away trying to build an email list, is it actually getting people? You know, sometimes we think, well, if I'm busy, I'm busy, and it means I'm getting somewhere. But sometimes we're just kind of running on the spot and nothing's changed. And sometimes you might maybe do something that you think is actually getting you somewhere and it's not. In my own case, I used to go to a website called Cura. And I had heard at the time that a lot of people were saying that if you want to build a following, if you want to get people on your email list, what you should be doing is going over to Cura, answering questions, and then what will happen is the people who see your answers will probably click on your link, they'll probably follow you, and they'll probably go over to your website. Now, in the beginning, I thought that's what's going to happen. So what I used to do was I used to spend day after day answering loads of questions. And then one day I actually went into my web stats and just out of curiosity, I just said to myself, I wonder how many people are actually coming from Cura and going over to my website. You know how many went over? Zero. Absolutely zero. Not one person left that site to come over to my blog. And here was me thinking that all this busy work that I was doing was moving the needle in the right direction. So you can imagine what I did. I cut out Cura straight away because I said to myself, that's a waste of time. And I found something else to do. And that's why you need to keep tracking your progress to see what's working and what's not working. And what I'd say to you is just because other people say, well, I get traffic off TikTok or I get traffic off YouTube or I get email subscribers by writing articles on Medium. It doesn't mean that's going to work for you. And what you need to do is you need to test what's working. So by having your little notepad with all the different actions that you're taking, the results that you're getting from those actions, well, then you can see what works, what needs to maybe happen more often and maybe what you need to stop and do less of because again being a busy fool you've just been a fool so you need to find out what's working and you're going to find maybe that some of the things that aren't working are going to give you back some time so that you can focus more on your business moving the needle in the right way now what i recommend you should do as well too is that realizing that this bossing yourself is going to be uncomfortable there's going to be discomfort involved and I think it's because we are developing new habits, things we've never done before, which are uncomfortable. You know, you're going to be pulling hard on the steering wheel of your life and you are going to be setting yourself in a new direction. So it might mean sitting down, maybe recording videos like this, which in the beginning, I'll be honest, is uncomfortable. I didn't like doing it. I didn't feel comfortable on camera. Again, I would have done anything else but record a video here. But over time, as I did it again and again and again, it became more comfortable and I don't even think about it anymore. So you need to realise that what you're about to do is going to be hard. But things always are hard in the beginning until they get easier. Things are always a lot of discomfort in the beginning until they get comfortable. And you may find that maybe some of the things that you're doing right now will never be comfortable. It'll always be a pain in the butt to record your videos. It'll always be a pain in the butt to sit down and write a blog post or whatever. But you need to be willing to lean into that and realizing that your why, the place that you want to go to, 
is worth all this discomfort. It's worth all this work. And realizing that not everybody gets to where you want to get to. Everybody's full of talk. Everybody's talking about, oh, I'll write a book someday. Oh, someday I'll build a business. Oh, someday I'll go on social media and I'll do TikTok videos and try and make a following and all that. But you need to realize that not many people do that. And the reason they don't do those things is because it's uncomfortable, because there's work involved. And by realizing that, well, at least you'll know, well, if I want to get there, I'm willing to push myself through these uncomfortable things of getting through the discomfort because this why, this thing, this target that I'm aiming for is the most important thing to me. And by keeping your eyes on where you want to go to, it'll help you get through the discomfort that you're in right now. Another thing I'd say to you as well too is use timers. Timers are really, really great to kind of get you focused. Because sometimes what we'll do is we'll say to ourselves, well, you know something, I am going to write a blog post today. And then we write a blog post. And what we do is we don't actually pay attention to the time. So one blog post could maybe take 20 minutes. Maybe tomorrow's blog post could maybe take three hours. And by having no kind of restriction on the time that we use, we sometimes just waste that time. Because you're going to find that the more time you give yourself to do a chore, your time, it'll actually expand to take up that. So if you say to yourself today, well, I've only got half an hour to write a blog post, you will write a blog post in half an hour. But if you say to yourself, well, I've got three hours to write a blog post, you can be guaranteed you are going to take the full three hours to write that blog post. And you're going to find sometimes that the more time we give ourselves to do something, even though we probably think, well, it's going to benefit me because the blog post I'm going to write in three hours is going to be one, it's going to be a better one than the 30 minute one. But it's not always the case. So what you need to do sometimes is just to lock yourself down to a certain amount of time. And sometimes by working in these kind of time sprints, you'll actually get a lot more done. Now this was something that I used to do when I was writing fiction. What I used to do was I used to set my stop uh, my stopwatch up for half an hour. And then what I do is hit the starter. Whether I wanted to write or not, I had to write. I had to write for 30 minutes. I couldn't stop writing until I, the, until the buzzer went off. So when the buzzer went off, I had 30 minutes of writing. Now, it wasn't the best of writing, but I could go back and I could edit it. But there was 30 minutes of writing there. And then what I would do is I'd probably go off, have a cup of tea, go to the toilet or do something for five or 10 minutes. And then I'd come back, sit down again, set the timer up again for another 30 minutes and then blast away for another 30 minutes without distraction. So in that kind of short period of time, I had an hour of solid writing. And it really surprised me sometimes how much I could actually get done when I was just focused on just trying to get as much work as I'd done in the hour by just breaking up into two half an hour segments. And you're gonna find that too. If you do find that maybe you are maybe restricted in time and you're saying, well, I haven't got the time to work in a passion business. A solid 20 minutes or half an hour of really deep work of you just head down, you're going to find, you'll be surprised how much you'll actually get done. And that there will be a lot better for you than giving yourself two or three hours to work on your business because you're just kind of distracted or not focused and not doing the stuff that needs to be done. So try that out. Try setting up a timer, set up for 20 minutes, half an hour, but don't go more than half an hour because sometimes, you know, we mentally get fatigued and you will find that you're not going to do your best work probably after half an hour or 40 minutes. So you will need to just kind of refresh your brain for a couple of minutes and then give it another go and go back to it. But I found that's really, really helpful for me. And by forcing yourself with these time periods, it's a good way of bossing yourself because you're saying to yourself, well, I'm not going to get out of this chair. I'm not going to turn off this laptop until this half an hour is over. So it is a really easy way to kind of boss yourself by doing really, really focused work in a certain time period. Another thing you need to do is you need to stop negotiating with yourself. What we do, we are brilliant at negotiating ourselves. You know, in my own case here, as I was recording this video, the little voice in my head was giving me lots of other things I could do instead of doing this video. It was telling me to go and watch another TV show. It was telling me just to, you know, maybe, maybe move things around on my website. You know, maybe read my emails. Maybe have a look and see how my videos are you doing on YouTube. Or maybe go over to Twitter and see what's trending on Twitter. My brain was telling me that, and this is me who is constantly making content. So we all have it. You're never going to get it over this moment where you're just going to get out of bed and your brain is just going to be on your side, going to want you to do the work. It doesn't. 
your brain wants an easy day today. It doesn't want you to get outside your comfort zone. It doesn't want you to take actions you don't want to do. It doesn't want to do, it wants to do as little as possible. So what it's going to say to you today, it's going to tell you, well, you know something? You recorded three videos this past three days. How about we take today off? How about maybe take the next two days off? You know, you've been really pushing yourself. You've got outside your comfort zone and, you know, you, you, don't, you don't need to do this today. And you're going to find that your brain is going to negotiate with you. And it's not that we just do it with our work, the stuff that we should be doing. It happens in other parts of our lives. You know, we promise ourselves, well, I'll go to the gym. And then we negotiate with ourselves saying, oh, it's raining outside today. We'll do it tomorrow. You know what I'll do? I'll actually maybe just, um, I'll, I'll do something else instead. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll what will I do? I'll, I'll go and I'll look on Amazon and maybe get myself a new pair of trainers. Or I'll get myself a new tracksuit. Or I'll get something that's going to help me get toward that goal. But you just, nothing changed. You didn't go to the gym. You didn't exercise. You maybe bought an, another pair of runners or a tracksuit or something like that. But we sometimes go with the easiest route. So you need to stop this negotiating with yourself. You need to, as you get out of bed, say to yourself, these are the things that need to be done. And by the end of the day, they will be done. Come hell or come high water. So stop negotiating yourself because that is really, really going to help you back, help hold you back. Sorry. Again, sometimes pre-planning your day will make a big difference in helping you boss yourself. Because as I said in a second ago, when you know what needs to be done and has to be done, well, then there's a good chance you'll probably do it. Now, what I'd say to you is a lot of us have this idea of, you know, doing a to-do list and filling out a huge to-do list. Oh, I have to write a blog post. I have to do a video. I have to send emails. I have to do this. And by having too long of a to-do list, we maybe don't do it because it seems like I have a lot of work to do today. So let's just do it maybe tomorrow. So what I'd say to you is to focus on the work which is going to give you the most value. You know, you're going to find that probably doing something like a video, writing something like a blog, blog post is going to be more value to you than playing around with the fonts on your blog of maybe just changing the headline on a sales letter or doing something simple that feels like you're doing work that is of little value to you and your business. So what I'd say to you, if you are coming up with a to-do list, Try and make sure that the actions that you're taking are high value actions, are the most important things. And then if you do have time, well, then you can do maybe the lesser actions further down. But get the most stuff done in your day that's the most important, that is going to move your business in the right direction. Again, going back to if you have been tracking what's working and what's not working, well, then you know yourself what is moving your business in the right direction. So those are the actions that you need to do and then you can play around with everything else later on in the day. But don't bite off more than you chew. Don't have a huge, you know, to-do list that you know for a fact that you're never going to go through. Even if you only get through maybe two or three actions a day. But make sure that what you're doing right now has a high value and is moving you and your business in the right direction. And again, what you need to do is you need to have a no excuses mindset. You know, we love to come up with excuses. We love to say, well, the reason I didn't exercise today again because it was raining or my runners were wet or I just didn't feel like it. I didn't have the energy and we just use excuse after excuse after excuse. Now, do you really want to get to the end of your life having a load of excuses or living the life that you want to live? You can't have both. It's one or the other. So which is more important to you? Is it more important to have excuses, to have reasons for why you didn't do it, or living the life that you want to live. So as I said, this podcast episode, you know, maybe it might be maybe a slap of reality around your face, but I know some people delude themselves into thinking that, you know, they are going to be successful building an online business, building a business around the passion of having all this wonderful success, but they're not willing to put in the work. They're not willing to show up on days when they don't want to do it. They're not willing to get outside their comfort zone. They're not willing to embarrass themselves. And you've been guaranteed that whatever life you're looking to achieve is going to be on the other side of those things. You always find that there's very few people actually make it to the top of the mountain. And where you're going right now, you are going to be climbing up that mountain. It's going to be tough. It's going to be hard. There's going to be days when you don't want to give up. It's going to be days when you are probably going to be in your own where no one's supporting you. 
what you need to do is you need to keep your eyes on the prize. You need to say to yourself, well, the reason I'm showing up here today to record these videos is because of this change that I want to make. I want to make a change in my life, my kids' lives, the people around me. I want to make a difference in the world. So by having a strong why, that's going to pull you forward. But even on even having a why, it doesn't mean that every day you get out of bed, it's going to be all sunshine, rainbows and lollipops. You're going to be tired some days. You're going to be unmotivated. You're going to question yourself. You're going to think, well, you know something? This is too hard. But you need to come back again and again and again and again. Because if you are looking for success, success never shows up on day two. It doesn't show up on day three, day four, day five, day six. You can guarantee that if success is going to show up, it's going to be the end of you taking actions over a long and continuous time, consistently. On days when you didn't want to do it. On days when you were tired. On days when you're motivated. On days when no one will support you. You need to do that if you're looking to be successful. So I hope you enjoyed this podcast episode. I hope I didn't put you off building an online business, but I just wanted to give you some home truths because I don't want you deluding yourself thinking that this is going to be easy or that every day is all sunshine and rainbows and lollipops, that I'm excited to be here every day or that I'm different, that I'm a superhuman and that I don't negotiate with myself or that I don't have down days. I'm just like you. I have down days. I have days when I question myself. I have days when I'm saying... Barry, let's not make another video. Let's do anything but do another video or a podcast episode. But I know if I want to get to where I want to get to, I need to put this butt in my I need to put my butt in the seat today and I need to be here in front of you. So if you enjoyed this podcast episode or if you have any comments, please feel free to leave them below this episode. And if you would like to know how you could actually make money from your skills, if you click on the link in the show notes, I'm gonna show you 10 proven ways to make money from your skills. So as always, have a lovely day. Take care. Bye-bye.